for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the man. She's as always got some defensive plays for you guys today out of my Dolphins ebook slash Giants ebook. They're the exact same defense. Uh, but today's video, I'm going to be going over one of my most used defenses, going back several Madden. It's one of my most used defenses in Madden 22, and it's one of my most used defenses probably Madden 21, Madden 20, maybe Madden 19. The setup changes, and I'm going to show you guys multiple different setups that you can use to make this defense really hard to stop. It'll get a ton of pressure. It'll also stop the run. It'll be a very good pass defense. All that stuff I'm going to show you today uh, in this video. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, more practice mode videos with defensive breakdowns, Woo! do me a favor, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Now this is the formation right here, the 245 double A gap. There's tons of different double A gaps. It pretty much works the same in all of them. Uh, the only real you know thing that you're going to have to make sure that you have on a, on a scheme like this, you want to make sure you have your fastest outside linebackers in these two spots. Number one, I already have uh, Van Genkel. I don't even know who that guy is, but he's an A6 speed, so he'll get it done. On the other side, we're going to want to put Shaq Griffin because he's a 91 speed so we'll go ahead and we'll put him there and those are going to be the two most important positions for two reasons really number one i'm going to be using one of them and the other one's going to be getting the pressure so it's really all about those two guys the rest of these guys don't matter so if you have fast defensive ends you know say you got josh sweat or something you can take them out put them out of one of these outside linebacker spots for this particular play it doesn't really matter but i would also try to make sure that they have speed and catching because like i said you're going to be using one of these guys so the play itself or at least the first play it's the mid blitz everybody knows about this play the first time i put this play out was probably back in like mad 19 or mad 20 it was a completely different setup back then the setup that i use now is probably a little bit easier and it's a little bit more consistent but i'll show you a couple different setups against a couple different offenses because there's a lot of different ways to run this you can really run this setup i'm going to show you too out of just about any of these plays like i could run it out of the buck zone blitz i might show that a little bit later on uh, but i'm going to show you guys a full scheme because there's a couple of really good blitzes that come out of the two for five double a gap now before getting this video as always this video is brought to you by coin sponsor aoeah if you guys want to get your mutt team up and you want to support this channel at the same time do me a favor check them out link in the description below and use discount code money to get three percent off it's already some of the cheapest coins on the market now as far as this play goes like i said there's a couple of different setups you can do number one i used to do this where i would blitz this guy here bring him down into the box and basically just hover this center uh, i don't typically get picked up on the on you know he doesn't typically pick me up on the blitz but i can do this and basically drop right back into coverage this is a decent setup it still works pretty good you're also going to make sure that these safeties are closer to their assignments if i do this this setup here i always want to guess pass too because that's going to be one of the most important things to make sure that these uh defensive ends don't bite on the play action but guess pass that's important and the last thing you can do if you want to is spread the defensive line which you can see is just going to basically um you know get these outside linebackers in a, a little bit uh, better spacing so that they get avoided by any you know any of the tackles so this is something you can do you're going to get a lot of pressure doing that but that's not typically the way i like to do it anymore they said this is something you can do i still do it from time to time they say you just want to make sure that you get that safety down i'll go ahead and i'll bring this guy back like i said this is real simple just guess pass i hover the center because it's going to basically make all these linemen come in quickly and you can see you're going to get instant pressure that way but it's still like i said there's a better way to do it where you have a little bit more coverage now let's say that we're going to do that first setup against something where the running back's gonna go out in a pattern, like the double in sale. So that's why I prefer this second setup, especially against an offense like this, where I'm just gonna walk these safeties down once again. And then I don't have to really do anything other than just bring this guy over and basically uh, and put it, you know, once again, guess pass, because that's the most important part, but just bring this guy over to the defensive end is all I really have to do to get that other defensive end off the edge free. So now give me the opportunity to drop down to the running back, drop into the tight end, whatever. You can see the quick pass is still there, but that's something that, you know, the computer's gonna do. The, your, your opponent isn't always going to do that. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, walk these safeties down. That's probably the most important part of the setup. Bring this guy over. You always want to bring in the guy that's over the running back because even if he's pass blocking, this other outside linebacker will typically get around that running back anyway, either via the play action or just based off of the pass protection. As you can see right there, like I said, that's something where man coverage will typically take away that table route. They won't get much. So a lot of times to eliminate those quick throws, I'll just press. I'll just bring everybody down, take away those short routes. 
And now you'll see how, you know, basically all the short throws will be will be swallowed up and Cam Newton is going to be getting taken sacks because, you know, all the short routes are taken away if you take away the space. So now the exact same play. I'm still able to drop back into coverage and we get an instant free man off the side here. You can see we almost get some A-gap pressure too because the, because 71, almost it looks like he lets his guy go because he, he kind of thinks he's got to come around to pick up uh, the outside edge rusher, but it doesn't really matter. You have a five on five. I typically, you, know, you get a free man and I typically get to get back. I mean, I, I'm, it's almost a sack by the time I get back into coverage, but you can see I'm back into coverage and I have the ability to take away crossers, take away short stuff, which is really all you have to do at this point. If you find that um, they're not coming off the edge and picking you up, you can just use your blitz right in too. As you can see right here, I mean, I'll just be in the backfield and just plant the quarterback. So it's just a straight sprint. So that's something where I feel like they might have tried to patch this a little bit based off the fact that, um, I mean, I know I've been using it in a lot of game plays, um, but you can basically just do that. If they don't pick you up, you can just go ahead and sprint right in. Like I said, there's a ton of different ways to do this. You can see we're just, we're getting instant sacks if they don't, if they decide not to pick up. So against an empty backfield look, this is the exact same look. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to pick the side that has the most receivers. There's three on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this guy free off the left side. I'm going to drop back into that tight end. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. Also have the option to drop back against the, um, you know, there we got. I mean, I could have tried to drop into that drag, but I'm really trying to take away the inside release. I'm sure we had free pressure. Like I said, this is the same thing. You want to take away the short throws, you just got to bring everybody down. But this is something where, you know, I don't recommend necessarily running this a lot against empty backfields, but it's something you can do if you get stuck in that look. So you can see right there, we get that sack, we take away that crosser. It's going to be the exact same look, and it's pretty much a five on five pressure. So that's a real easy play. We get a ton of sacks, uh, but you could also do that exact same trick with plays like the buck zone blitz. So I like the cover three variation out of this because the seam flat here is way better than the curl flat in my opinion. So all I have to do is blitz all, guess pass, and then bring this guy in. We're going to have the exact same success that we had on the previous play. And then I'm going to become the three rec hook. So once again, i got to take away that tight end once the play starts. And then you can see here, I mean, there's nothing really. The curl flat is we get another interception there. The curl flat does a much better job of following uh, its receivers. As you can see, I don't think I got the pressure, but this is a good play to mix in because you can see right here, this guy here, he doesn't necessarily force to go outside. He takes away the, the, the drag. That's something that curl flats do. I'm sorry, that uh, seam flats do that curl flats don't do. It looks like he has to be an under route, but he takes away the crossing route, which is one of the reasons that this play is much better than typical cover threes. Once again, a bunch of different ways that we can run this defense, a bunch of different ways that we can get pressure. I prefer typically to do it the um, you know do, do it this way. This play might work better uh, because the running backs in the play action to do it like this. You can see we get that, that pressure right off the bat on the other side. You know you can run it so many different ways. That's why I like this defense. Your opponent they might try to um, you know do something like uh, shift their defensive line in the direction or run in the direction away from where you're you're you know bring this guy in stuff like that. And they can see you still have success because the play action just takes the running back way out of the play. So if you guys want to see a bigger uh, you know more detailed version of this scheme on YouTube as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section or you can check it out on my ebook my defensive uh, you know Dolphins slash Giants ebook has all these plays in already and I also have a ton of really good um, you know past defenses really from all these because I'm in the Dolphins playbook so hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see that other than that thanks for watching man my shit out Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.